Once again, uh, we'll get right into it with the questions. So if you want to raise your hand now, we'll kind of start lining things up um, as the players get up here. We have senior guard Marquise Noel. We have junior forward Ish Masood. I'm sorry, we have uh, senior forward Keontae Johnson. Uh, I think Ish may be joining us here in a few minutes. We'll start uh, here in the middle. Um, we'll Adam, did you want you have one? Uh, hey guys, welcome to New York. Marquise, I know you're from New York. Yes, I guess for both of you guys, have you played in the garden before? And if not, what's it going to be like your first time here? What's kind of the coolest thing about walking around the garden? And um, you know, anything unique about playing here that you always dreamed about? We'll start with Marquise and then go to Keontae. Um, it's a blessing to be here, man. Got to give all the honor and glory to the man uh, above for giving me and his team this opportunity to play here. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be fun. I mean, you hear all the great stories about the historic performances of you know all-time NBA players and the, and the greats. So I'm just looking forward to to being in this atmosphere and stepping on that court. No, I never played there. This will be my first time. Keontae? Um, like he said, it's definitely a blessing to be here, just knowing all the history of people that have played here. Um, I played here my freshman year. We played West Virginia. Um, one, so, it's, I mean, it's always a good experience coming back and just playing in the NBA arena and just knowing, like, it's something that we wanted to do when we was younger. Stay in that same row on the aisle. Go ahead. D. Scott Pritch and uh, K-State Athletics. Marquise, um, I'm just curious if you might be able to take us through heart over height. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, you kind of blew up on social media during your last performance and people that may not have known about you know about you now across the nation. How does that feel? Uh, it feels good, man, um, to see that your hard work, um, your faith, and you know everything is paying off. Um, so it's a blessing, man. Um, heart over height means, you know, it's a slogan that I live by. Um, you don't determine um, somebody, somebody's, you know, I guess, you know, uh, destiny by their, their height. Um, you determine it by their heart and their passion. And that's, you know, something that I live by and that, you know, that I play my game after. So just, you know, heart, heart is the, your heart is the biggest thing. Um, and I noticed that as a young kid and, you know, I live by that. We're going to stay on this side. We're going to go one row back. Hi, Audrey Dahlgren, WLNS in Lansing. Marquise, this question is for you. Michigan State has done a phenomenal job in the first two games shutting down the star point guards of their teams, opposing teams. And so how do you view that? Uh, what makes them so difficult in that way defensively? And going maybe more of that, that heart and passion that you're speaking to, do you relish in kind of knowing that they've shut these guys down and maybe you could be the one you know, to succeed? Uh, I determine how the game is going to go. Um, I mean, I'm not really focused on, you know, what they did in the past versus other good point guards. I played in the toughest league in the country, which is the Big 12. Um, you have all types of Hall of Fame coaches that, you know, scout, scouted me and, you know, uh, tried to stop me. So I, I don't think that's, that's going to be an issue. I feel like this game is going to be Kansas State um, Wildcats versus Michigan State. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to win a basketball game. We'll stay on that side. One more row back. Jim Trusme, Wall Street Journal. Uh, for Keontae, um, you're an expiring story <clears throat> after your health scare. Um, what gave you the confidence that you could come back? And I've also seen where you credited the Kansas State medical staff for one of the reasons you chose Kansas State. Um, I just had the right circle around me. Um, just my parents, uh, the athletic trainer at Florida and K-State. Um, when I was going through the situation, we just found the right doctors, um, the best doctors in the world to figure out my situation. And every doctor's appointment I went to, everything was getting cleared. So it's just the faith, um, trusting God, just knowing he had the right path for me. And we're just following his lead and just taking it day by day. We're going to crop. What, do you have a follow-up? Yeah. Um, are there any doctors you want to shout out, like specifically that were crucial for your you know, um, Dr. Ackerman from Mayo Clinic. Come across the row in row two. Brandon Zenner, KWCH in Wichita. Marquise for you. Jerome Tang, 
hired uh, one year ago yesterday tomorrow you guys take the floor in the sweet 16 just looking back on what this last year has meant to this program everything that he's brought in just just what comes to your mind when you think about the last year man it's been a special year you know for for us and especially you know me and ish um who's not up here um just you know we had a rough year last year um and we we just stood together uh, we still grounded, you know, when things weren't going our way. And um, when we realized that Coach Tang was going to be the head coach, you know, we believed in him from day one. Um, we believed in his vision that he had for, you know, us two and in the program. Um, and to see that, you know, we taking the floor on the Sweet 16, I mean, it's just a blessing. Staying in the middle, one row back. Uh, yeah, I guess this is for both of you guys, Alec Bussey, Rivals. Um, you guys have done a lot of team building stuff off the court as far as talking about emotions and feelings, and then a lot of it is kind of carried over to social media with videos that have been posted throughout the season. Can you guys explain why it's important uh, for you guys to be able to connect with the coaching staff um, beyond a basketball level and how much you've been able to do that this season? Start with Keontae, and then we'll go to Marquise. Um, I feel like it's big it's just – I feel like Coach Tan, he do a great job of just trying to know us more as men than basketball players. Um, it's deeper than basketball to us, so I feel like he do a great job of just keeping us all together, um, staying connected. We had team dinner at his house every Sunday, um, like during the off season, building up to the season. So, I mean, it just shows how, what character he has as a person. Um, shows like, I mean, that's really about it for me. Just, it's just deeper than basketball, really. So. Yeah. Uh, to piggyback on what he said, I mean, it's deeper than basketball, you know, with this program and this coaching staff. Um, they do a very good job of making sure that they know, you know, each player on this team. Um, they they want to know how you're feeling on a day-to-day -day basis. They want to know, you know, what you're thinking, you know. So it's deeper than basketball, you know, being at K-State. Um, and, you know, that, that gives, you know, players confidence to trust in their game plan, trust in them, and, you know, um, want to learn from them because, you know, they do a good job of making sure that you are, you know, well uh, on and off the court. So, you know, you got to give a credit to, to the whole coaching staff, to Gene Taylor and everybody behind the scenes that, that, that go into uh, winning. So. We'll stay on the aisle one row back. Christian Arnold Day of New York. Uh, Marquise, this is for you, too. Um, Tyson was here before talking. He mentioned that he remembered playing you in high school. I was curious if you remember playing him in high school. And on this stage, in this moment, is there sort of an extra appreciation for being here in, from you to be going against someone who came up from this area and is, is you're going up against uh, you know, a local rival almost? Uh, I do remember playing Tyson. I mean, he, was, he went to Christ the King uh, High School uh, with Jose Alvarado. Um, you know, I grew up, you know, playing in parks with him. Um, so I just want to give a big shout out to New York City for breeding, you know, tough and gritty guards and, you know, just give him a shout out. Um, I mean, you know, we, we are rivals, but we grew up playing against each other. Um, and when we step on the court, it's going to be nothing but competition. But um, now that I'm here, I just want to, you know, congratulate him on where he, he came from and how he, you know, got better. And now we both on this stage, so I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough game. It's gonna be a blessing, but you know, shout out to him. We're gonna go across the room over here. Just raise your hand so we can see you. Okay, go ahead. Marquise, this is Jerry Bembry from ESPN Anscape. You've got the social media handles of <clears throat> Mr. New York City with the tagline "I Run New York." Can you tell the story about <laughs> why you adopted that? <laughs> Dang man, you put me on the spot. I mean, uh, um, uh, you know, it's just. Um, the confidence that I have um, in myself, I made a promise to myself, you know, back when I was in high school that I was going to do anything and everything in my, in my power to be the best player that came out of New York. So I kind of keep that edge and that kind of, you know, just reminds me every day I wake up that, you know, I still have more work to do. You know, guys like Carmelo, Bernard King and, you know, all the greats came out of New York. So that just keeps me grounded and keeps me working hard up you size has always been a factor with you are you surprised that it still comes into play with the comments from coach Cal last weekend I mean uh, I spoke to coach Cal uh, he DM'd me you know after the game and said that he apologized for you know his comment um, that he he wasn't really thinking straight after the game um, but he congratulated me on a good game on a great game um, and 
you know, we spoke after that, and he was just like, you know, uh, I congratulated him on, you know, his career and what he's done, you know, at Kentucky, and told him that, you know, I'll be happy to see him at the Hall of Fame one day. And um, he said, yeah, you'll get there too, uh, because your passion, your hard work um, will get you there. And he wanted to stay in that you know, my press press conference when I do get inducted. So it was just a cool exchange. I mean, it was a cool exchange. I mean, shout out to Coach Cal for reaching out to me. That was that was really big. We'll stay on this side on the aisle. Just raise your hand so we can see you. Go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Uh, for for Marquise, um, could you kind of walk us through, like, your the part of New York where you grew up? You know, what was it like for you growing up here? Like, what was uh, it's a very big diverse city for, for you? What was kind of your, your New York City like when you were uh, coming up? Uh, growing up in New York, I mean, you know, I grew up on 109th in Lexington. Um, I stood in the park uh, just grinding, working on my game. Um, I had a good supporting cast who, who was willing to work me out at all different times of the, the, the hour. Um, and, you know, it was just a rough neighborhood, but I didn't let that affect me because I knew that, you know, God had had a bigger plan. Um, but, you know, I had my big brother, my father, my uncles working me out, you know, every day, you know, for a moment like this, um, standing here, being here in Madison Square Garden. We've got time for two more questions. We're going to take them from this side, here in the front to start. Ralph Russo with the Associated Press. Marquise, it's going to be another New York question. Um, you talk about gritty, tough guards. Why? why? Why does New York produce gritty, tough guards? And who, are there some that you sort of idolized? Um, I mean, just just the the environment that you in that you grow up, grow up in. I mean, you have to be tough uh, and hard nosed, or you won't get to play on the on the you know toughest basketball courts. Um, so that that's kind of how I grew up, um, and. I grew up watching, you know, Kemba Walker, um, Isaiah Briscoe, Isaiah Whitehead, you know, and they all did some legendary things, you know, in their career. And, you know, that inspired me to keep working hard and, you know, do similar things that they've done. And we'll stay on this side right in front of me, fourth row. Go ahead. Uh, Zach Brazil in New York Post. Marquise, do, do, you, do you feel like you've proven a lot of people wrong, you know, and Coming out of high school, you, you went to Arkansas Little Rock, and you talked about the height thing. I mean, just to even be where you are, do you, do you feel like you've overcome odds? Yeah, I feel like I, I, you know, overcome a lot of odds. You know, just being in a mid-major school um, a couple years ago, not knowing, you know, what my future may hold, but just sticking that out, grinding, you know, just trusting in my work. Um, but I wouldn't say I proved a lot of people wrong. I proved myself right. You know, I knew that, you know, I'd be a high major guard um, if I just worked hard and have the right circle around me. And now that I'm here, you know, it's a blessing. Um, I mean, it's, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless because, you know, God is good. Kind of similar story to you. You know, he, he went to Northeastern and ended up transferring to Michigan State. I mean, do you kind of see yourself a little in him just in terms of the road you guys have taken? Um... I feel like we have similar, you know, you know, journeys. I mean, you know, he grew up, you know, in similar backgrounds like me. Um, and, you know, we just worked hard. Um, we eliminated all distractions. Um, and we put basketball first. And that's why you get to see uh, Tyson at a Michigan State. You get to see Jose Alvarado, you know, at in the NBA. So just, you know, it's – not a lot of people get to make it, you know, where we come from. So that's why I wanted to shout him out, you know, for making it to the stage. Okay. Marquise, Keontae, thank you. Appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for taking the time. We'll have Coach Tang up here in just a few minutes or maybe a few seconds. Coach Tang, welcome to New York. Thank you. Great, Great to be to here. Great to have you here. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach, and then we'll go to questions. Once again, same as with the players, we'll bring a microphone over to you. Just give your name and affiliation before asking your question. So, Coach, you want to get us started? 
Yeah, uh, first I just want to thank the good Lord for this opportunity to uh, be the head coach of Kansas State and with this group of young men and uh, be playing in Madison Square Garden. I mean, uh, it's a dream come true for kids, adults. It doesn't matter if it's your first time as a head coach or like Coach Izzo, his 25th consecutive NCAA tournament. I mean, it, it's, it's just a blessing to be here and it's hard to do. And so extremely thankful. We'll start down here in the front, down far left. Hi, hey Coach. Ralph Russo with the Associated Press. Uh, you got about a handful of New Yorkers on this team. Is there something about New York players? I, I know you didn't recruit all of them, some of them you inherited, but is there something about New York players that are is, uh, especially um, that stands out? Um, well, their accents. <laughs> um, you know, no, it just worked out. Keeson uh, ish. Uh, they were our chief recruiters, right? And uh, we were flipping over every rock, watching every film, talking to as many people as we could to try and assemble a team. And uh, they did a great job of hosting guys. And I think uh, the other guys felt comfortable knowing that we had some New York guys. But I think Kansas State has a history of having uh, good players from New York, Curtis Kelly, um, J.O. You know, we, we've had multiple guys in the past, so, um, you know, I, I'm thankful for it. I know that. We'll go over here to the aisle in row two. Go ahead. Uh, Brandon Zenner, KWCH in Wichita. Coach, you spent a number of years with Paul Mills at Baylor, and you didn't take time. You didn't waste time going to social media and uh, giving him praise. Just what were your takeaways of your time with him, um, and what makes him? You know, he's going to be successful uh, with the Shockers. Yeah. Well, I I absolutely love Paul Mills. Um, he's like a brother to me, and. Uh, so, so happy for him and his family, for Wendy and the girls. And he's going to be incredible because he is passionate about young people and about developing young men. And there's no, like, there's no throttle, like, hold back governor on him in his love for what, what he pours into his guys. And so, yeah, he, he attracts, you know, we always, we, he, he's the one that told me, he said, you know, Tang, uh, tang tens ha hang with tens and one hangs with one. And he's a 10 and he's going to have some tens around him. We'll stay in that aisle one row back. Alec Bussey, Rivals. Coach Tang, you have spoke a lot this year about developing your players into good men, good wives, or good husbands, excuse me, uh, good fathers, all those different things. Can you explain how you and your staff have been able to teach those lessons through conversations this season? You know, I heard uh, there was a famous pastor, and he said, um, every day preach the gospel and sometimes use words. And so it's not what we say to them, it's what they see us live. And our guys have got to come into our homes and uh, have dinner, and uh, they, they don't just know where the, the bathrooms are, they know where the knives and the forks are, right? So they've seen us love our wives and raise our children and, and discipline our children, and they, they've, seen, they've seen the whole gamut of what it looks like to be a, a man of character and, and someone who loves his wife and, and how they raise their families. And so I think more than anything else, our, my coaching staff is an example of it to them. And hopefully some of it sinks in as they move forward. I believe it will. We'll go across the room on the right side here in row three. Hey, Coach. Scott Reese, KCTV, Kansas City. Uh, I've also got a quick follow-up after this. But you've got a, a, a trio of rotational guys who are from New York. I'm just wondering, is there any sort of psychology, anything to, to coaching him up? You clearly don't need to motivate him. Do you need to talk him down at all before going out on this stage? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, every guy is kind of like senior night, except maybe on steroids. You know, your seniors, uh, some of them are going to try too hard, and some of them are going to try too hard to try to not try too hard, right? And you just have to see where it's at after that first media and then figure out what you have to say to each of them. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a good feel for that. Uh, second of all, I happen to see you wandering around Times Square last night. I'm just wondering, <laughs> favorite part of wandering around the streets in New York? Well, uh, I got to be with my wife, so I knew where the credit card was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love Junior's Cheesecake, so we went and got some cheesecake. <laughs> We're going to come back to the aisle on that side. Yep, we'll start in the fourth row there. Hi, Coach. Meredith Cash from Insider. Um, thanks for talking with us. I 
know you mentioned a little bit earlier just how much this moment means and it's a dream to adults, kids. I know it probably means something a little bit more to Keontae given everything he's gone through. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that journey and what it's like to watch him on this stage now? And also, I know that you uh, were with Jared Butler at Baylor who went through something similar. Um, and can you tell us if you know having that experience helped you with that? Well, first of all, having the experience with Jared and a couple other guys at Baylor gave me the comfort level that I knew that I could help him get in the basketball shape. Um, having dealt with those doctors before, I was very confident when they told me what his situation was and that he was good to play. And if it was their son, they would be on the court also. Um, watching Keontae just continue to grow as a player uh, and, and do the spectacular things on the court has been extremely rewarding, but not near as rewarding as watching him be thankful every day for the opportunity. I mean, if you watch him, like, this dude's an All-American, and he always wears the team shoes, right? Like, he doesn't have, like, most guys want to have their own thing. He always wears the team shoes, and he doesn't complain, and he plays video games with the walk-ons. You know, everybody in the locker room loves him. You know, I mean, he's just a great teammate. And so that's the thing to me that's been the most rewarding, to see someone as talented as him uh, be really thankful for this opportunity and then display it with his actions. We'll stay on the aisle right up here in front. Okay, uh, Dee Scott Fritch and Case Athletics. Coach, I uh, heard an interesting stat today that since 1990, Marquise and Morant are the only two NCAA players to have 40 points and 20 assists by the Sweet 16. I'm curious just what you can say about Marquise at this point. Uh, he's, you know, I, like I say, big time players make big time plays and big time moments. And uh, this is the biggest stage for college basketball. And uh, I'm really thankful that, you know, we tell our guys all the time <clears throat> that hard work pays off. And I'm really thankful that God's allowing his hard work to pay off right now. We'll stay on the aisle one row back. Hello? Oh, there we go. Sorry. Audrey Dahlgren, WLNS in Lansing, Michigan. When Tom Izzo found out that he was going to be facing you guys, he sort of compared his journey at Michigan State to yours in a way, learning under a very storied coach as he did with Judd Heathcote. And I'm just wondering how much that experience for you under Scott Drew, you know, it got you to where you are today and just the, the relation between the two, I guess, maybe with Izzo as well. You know, I, I, I've been – that. Thank you for sharing that story. I didn't know Coach Izzo told me in the, out in front of the, the building that he just told a whole bunch of lies about me. <laughs> <laughs> but Tom Izzo, man, is just a class act, and I've followed him for a long time. And the fact that as an assistant he knew my name, it, like, blew me away, you know, and um, just to watch what he's done and um, how he's handled his program and loved his players and had, like, tremendous success on and off the court, you know, uh, uh, how he handled the tragedy at Michigan State this year. Um, I mean, everybody can learn from that. And uh, I was blessed to work with Scott, and, and he did a great job of helping prepare me for this. And uh, he never, never treated me as an assistant, always told me to act like a head coach and treat the program like it was mine. So I, I do believe that when you're with guys like Judd Heathcote and Scott Drew, that you those, those Hall of Fame kind of guys, they, they help prepare you, you learn so much from them so that you are ready for this. And uh, and I'm just thankful. I, I told Coach Izzo, I'd, I wish it was me and him playing to see who goes to the Elite Eight, right? <laughs> it's going to be our teams, and so we're not going to do anything. It's about those guys out there on the floor. And I wouldn't want to shoot free throws against him, though, because I, I know he's really good at that. We'll come across the room on this side uh, here in row three. What's been the thing that's impressed you the most watching watching film of, of, of Michigan State coming into to, 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 to Thursday? Well, that is not the first time we've I've gone against a Michigan State team. And one of the things that's super impressive is how quickly they get the ball out the net and up the floor after the other team scores. So you, like, transition. We call it the bookends, right? The moment they touch the ball, uh, then the end of it and how great they rebound. 
So those two things we have to, to be prepared for, stopping them in transition, getting back, building the wall, making them play in the half court. And then at the end, when they take a shot, is being able to corral the ball and limit their, their second chance opportunities. And then they just play with Coach Izzo's toughness, you know, that gritty toughness, fight you for every inch of the court on every dribble and every pass. And, and so, um, and they're really good players that, that do those things. And so that, that makes it really hard. We'll stay on this side, uh, a couple rows back on the aisle, and then we got two more over there, and then we'll wrap it up. So go ahead over here. Michael Cohen from Fox Sports. Uh, Jerome, I'm curious, when you were putting this team together, what were some of the things you learned, the do's and don'ts and best practices of the transfer portal in what amounts to a lot of very brief uh, recruitments as you try and put guys together in a short span? Well, I'm not going to go into detail on that because then it gives the, you know, the, the formula away to other people. We all have to live in the portal. Um, but, you know, for me, the number one thing I looked for was winners and guys who had won in high school and college because and, uh, winners know that it takes a certain level of sacrifice in order to win, and so that was, for me, the most important thing. We'll go over across the way. Yep, on the edge there. Just raise your hand so Coach can see you. Yep, Hi, go Coach. ahead. Jerry Bembry from ESPN Anscape. In this day and age when there's constant player movement, uh, what was the impact of Marquise's decision to stay when you came on board? <laughs> huge, huge. Uh, um, the the really cool thing about it is that, and I found this out after, probably a month or two after I got the job, um, that Marquise had actually texted Gene Taylor, our athletic director, during the search and told him that, like, give him in my name. Like, hey, I'm going to help this, that, that Marquise was willing to stay to help the program win, right? And but like he told him, hey, look at Jerome Tang. And so when I got there, and I didn't know this, in our, my very first meeting with the team, he had unbelievable eye contact and he was, had, was nodding his head like in agreement with the things I was saying. And I just felt there was a heart connection there. And from the moment after that meeting on, he's been all on board. So yeah, we're not here without Marquise Noel staying. And we'll go one row back, the young man right behind him. Lillian Johnson, Sports Illustrated Kids. Um, Coach Tang, how are you trying to emulate from the Baylor program, and how are you trying to pave your own way from the Baylor program? Man, that is a terrific question. Uh, well, you know, uh, Scott really ex exemplified what it is to be a, a servant leader, and so following in that mold of leadership that, that you know, I'm here to serve these guys, our staff, our community, you know, our, and, and so being a servant leader is something that I, I want to embrace. Uh, I want our guys to have incredible experiences that have nothing to do with winning and losing, um, for them to understand that, that uh, there's a great life for them after the ball stops bouncing, but they've got to be great men and great husbands and great fathers, and the characteristics and, that you have to have in order to do those things. Um, Paving my own way, uh, I don't know. I, I hadn't really thought about that. I, I just, I, I want, I want the people who work for me uh, to, with me. Let me change that. The people who work with me to feel like it's their program, and I want them to take ownership of the areas that I give them and run with it. And I want our players to be able to feel like they can be themselves. That seems like a good question to end on, Coach. We appreciate you taking the time. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Go Cats. We will have uh, – FAU will be up here in just a few minutes. Scheduled for 150. That will be head coach Dusty May. So we'll have head coach Dusty May, and then we will have uh, select FAU players. Once again, a reminder, the – Kansas State press conferences, ham communications will be posting those on the NCAA's digital media hub. That is www.ncaa.veritone.com. Once again, www.ncaa.veritone.com. Uh, the Michigan State pressers are already up there. K-State will be up shortly. 
Transcripts are being provided by ASAP. Those will also be posted shortly. Michigan State is already up there.